Hello fellow Fay. it's She the Writer here to help you tell better stories and by the end of this video today you're going to know a little bit more about writer's block and what it actually looks like. So here we're going to have some footage from my writer's block week. So what is writer's block exactly? It kind of depends on who you ask. Basically it's a phenomenon or a name of a phenomenon that writers cannot really agree about uh, in terms of whether or not it actually exists. A lot of writers say that they go through these periods of writer's block where they cannot write or they cannot write the same thing or they just have no new ideas, no originality, um, no vision, so to speak. And I have kind of a mixed perspective on this. I would say that writer's block is not real if I didn't actually experience it, which I do. So I do know that it's real, but I don't think it's real in the way that we think it is. I mean, you can't say you have a block in most other professions. You can't just stop what you're doing and say, I can't do this because I have a, you know, a block, a surgeon block or something like that. So it is something that needs to be accounted for. But here's the thing about writer's block, is that writer's block has nothing to do with writing. So any writer who tells you that they cannot write because of writer's block is kind of not telling the full truth. Writer's block might prevent you from writing something original, it might prevent you from working on a particular project, and it might prevent you from wanting to write or enjoying writing. You can write during writer's block. How do I know this? All you have to do is pick up your favorite book, pick a line you like, and rewrite it as many times as you want. I've actually done this before. If your hands are working, or your voice is working, you can write. You just might not be able to write anything new. At all. Literally. Take a look at this footage. You've been watching it for a while now. This is footage from a really bad writing session. Um, it starts off okay. I'm taking notes for the first scene that I want to edit in the second draft of my screenplay. You saw me writing on the screenplay itself. You saw me making a two column list for plants and payoffs. And then here I'm trying to grapple with the software. You can see me highlighting. You can see my moments of confusion, my confusion hand as I call it going up and down. Um, as I'm trying to figure out how to copy these scenes into my note card documents with my notes in them and still have them be formatted in the correct form. So I eventually figured it out. Here I am, I'm retyping, I've got a copy in the sidebar, you can't really see there, of the original scene and I'm retyping it. So I am typing, but rewrites are often a place where writer's block likes to appear and you're going to see here how how the writing session starts to go a little bit south. So back to writer's block. You can write during writer's block, you just can't always write something new. Um, so the best thing to do if you do get writer's block or anxiety or depression, which are really just forms of writer's block, the best thing to do is to write your way through it. If you stop writing because of writer's block, you can't get out of it with the primary reason being that you won't know when you're out of writer's block because you're not writing. So the best way to get through a writer's block is to actually just write through it. You might work on another project or you might do what I'm about to do here in a little bit. So what I started doing here, you can see me writing about the script. I'm writing about the story, about the screenplay. Um, I'm confused about it, so I'm writing that down. You can also, if you don't even know what to journal about, you can literally, like I said, write the same sentence over and over. I worked on Cope Syndrome for 10 years and I did this a lot. I got a lot of stares. I actually, I was still in school and people saw me doing this and there was a fair amount of gossip about it that I didn't find out until later, but I would write the same sentence over and over and over until I got unblocked. Um, and that's that's okay because the physical somatic aspect of writing is also important and it can help you get unblocked. So here I'm journaling, I'm writing about the story, I'm writing about the spine, which in a screenplay terms, the spine of the story is something that every character in the story wants in some to some extent. Um, there has to be a desire that they're kind of all united by, even if it's for different reasons, good guys, bad guys, what have you. Um, maybe I'll get into that in another episode. And then another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a letter to Ro because I realized that he is the only character whose desires do not quite align with everyone else. Now, you don't have to have a spine. I'm not trying to tell you to follow a particular structure. But when all of your characters have a desire in common and one of them does not, you got to find out 
have y. So here's the letter. It's in brown, you can see. So I'm writing to Ro, asking him about what it is that he wants. I know what he wants. I know it's something different, so I'm addressing that. Um, I'm letting him know a little bit about how I'm doing. This is a very common method. Writing a letter to your character is not novel or new or different by any standard. A lot of writers do this. Uh, and I don't do it as often as I used to, but it's still pretty effective. So here I am back in my screenplay. I remember at this point I was thinking about working on something else because I just felt really, really blocked. Uh, but once I sorted through this, I wrote down a list at the bottom of my document, as I often do, of motifs I want to use, lines of dialogue I want to use later, possible continuations of the scene, possible endings to the scene because I haven't decided yet which ones I want to use. So here you can see me generating a little more text. It's getting a little bit better, a little smoother. I'm mostly recopying at this point from the previous version of the opening. And the important thing to remember with a rewrite is it's difficult for the reasons that I outlined last week. I talked about why a second draft is so difficult. So what I try to remember is that the second draft is kind of like a first draft. You can edit it. I really think of the first draft just as like breaking through, just getting it done. 30 days, 60 days, 7 days, whatever. The first draft is just getting a something on the page that's enough pages long that you can call it a screenplay and you have some character ideas, some plot points outlined in there, maybe some of them don't make it in. And then the second draft is in a way a first draft, but you kind of know more about what the story is. And then hopefully by third and fourth draft, you know more about it. So one thing that I've been doing to kind of um, help myself relax and get out of my block is to remember that you can take as many drafts as you want. You get as many shots as you want to take. So here I'm, I'm just moving on to something else, updating my website to get a break. But you can take as many shots as you want. So if you feel like your second draft isn't going well, plow through it and remind yourself maybe you can do five drafts instead of four or six drafts. If it's very hard for you to make progress um, without uh, making changes to the story, then just do more drafts. So for me, I'd rather get more drafts done and keep going and be able to write a little bit every day or write significantly every two days and have to do, you know, six or seven drafts, okay, than be stuck on a second draft trying to make the plot line totally cohesive. I'd rather write a second draft that's okay and be able to work on more drafts. So here I'm working on the outline for my course, Five Steps to Writing Compelling Characters. You can join the newsletter at shethewriter.com and you will be notified about when that comes out. I've got my outline in my notebook there, which I also talked about in last week's live show. And that's actually helping me get out of my block. As you can see, I've already got an outline. It's based on a talk and a workshop that I've given many times. So it's not exactly fiction, but it kind of helped me get out of it. So the key is keep writing. Okay, Susie Blue has this exercise, art journaling exercise, where you draw the labyrinth of your life. And it's like a timeline of your life to try and track like your path. Alrighty, I think I'm done knowing where to be. So like for the beginning, I just like for for early age, I just put like a book because I just remember words and like being really tripped out a lot of the time. I don't know why, but like I hallucinated a lot as a child, but I didn't know I was hallucinating. And I discovered crystals like around, I don't want to say 10 or something. I started collecting crystals and they were making me feel better, but I didn't know why. Now I do. Uh, but of course I lost all of them and like lost all my property. And then um, I put Prince Montage here because he was the first character that came to me that was an original character. And 11, I was like depressed for like three or four years. Just like everything was really quiet. Um, and I was having a lot of health issues, but I didn't know that they were health issues because was the part of the assignment that I think I understood. So I kind of followed that path and just like, just thought that's, I don't know. I thought the depression was just, I didn't know I was depressed. I thought that's just like, oh, this is what life is like. But it wasn't, it was bad, but I don't know. It was less like crazy for me. I felt like I was calming down. And then like, um, had my vision of Alan Cope, like at 15. And honestly, I was never the same after that. I just felt so much better. I got this clarity. So I just had like, became a novelist. You know, I felt like I really identified as a writer. I wrote a couple books. And then like, um, I put this 
letter Aleph because um, that's when like I when I listened to the Quran I started really becoming more like spiritual and like actually understanding my religion getting inspired by it and like healing from it which like kind of like the green and then I went to film school so that became part of my path and I feel like I kind of like the color kind of came back in if that makes sense and then like I had like my day job <laughs> I feel like this is very clear I feel like it was uh, kind of scary at first to do it. I didn't know how to do it, but I haven't done like an art journal exercise in a lot of years, like intentionally. So that was fun. If you like this video, please share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. It's all connected, my friends.